So I took a long road trip last week up to the Midwest and back to the South, which means I saw a metric fuck ton of Jesus billboards along the way. And right away, that's a bit of an admission of just what a shitty worldview Christianity really is. And then, I mean, I, the, the other worldviews don't have to advertise on billboards. Are right? you never driving down the road to see a billboard for liberalism or positivism or anything like that? They, 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 they seem to perpetuate their way through the marketplace of ideas based solely on their merit. Weird. But Jesus needs a PR budget, and based on the ubiquity of the billboards, a pretty substantial one at that. Of course, I've seen all these billboards before plenty of times, so there's nothing new about the experience for me. But what really struck me this time around was what a low bar they always set for themselves. And I really appreciate this. Imagine what kind of billboards they'd be tossing up if, for example, prayer actually worked. Right? You'd see signs like, amputated appendage, try Jesus, or inoperable tumor, call us today. But instead, you see stuff like, are you a depressed, broke, crack addict with no direction in life? Well, we might be able to help a little, at least. Like, for real, one of the ads that I saw just said, reject gluttony, except Jesus. We're better than gluttony was the best they could come up with. That'd be like McDonald's running a billboard that said, Big Macs are better than a kick in the nuts, and yet it's apparently the best that Christianity can do. I mean, we all know that Christianity tends to go after its victims when they're at their most vulnerable. Right? Most of the time, that means kids too young to know how to question adult authority yet. But barring that, they go after people who are depressed, addicted, broke, forgotten, abused, or otherwise fucked by the vicissitudes of life. Now, mostly they do this for the same reason that lions target the injured gazelle, right? These people's defenses are down. They're far more willing to nod along with a bunch of bullshit in exchange for a dollop of false hope and community. And that's what we tend to focus on as atheists because, you know, it's unspeakably fucking cruel. Conditional empathy is their stock and trade. And, and that's plenty to mark them out as the bad guys. But there's also an important tactical advantage that it gives them. Right. People who are at their lowest also only have one direction to go. And Christianity wants to hurry up and inject itself into that person's life quick before that inevitable upswing happens so that they can take credit for it. Things will get better because better is literally the only thing that things have left to get. And Christianity will say, see, God. Even if things don't get better right away. Right. It could take forever. It doesn't matter. Scam still works. They, they could even get worse for a considerable time. That just means you're not Jesusing well enough yet. As long as at some point along the road, things get noticeably better for the person, Christianity will chalk that up as a win for God. Now, that's not to say that religion plays no part in the turnaround. It can. It doesn't have to, right? But it, but it can. It can give a person a new thing to focus on and help them reorganize their approach to life. But in those instances, it's the person doing the reorganization, not the religion, and certainly not the God. You know, it's kind of like how people convince themselves that they're gluten intolerant because they have fewer stomach aches when they don't eat bread. I mean, of course you do, right? Bread's not exactly good for you, but anytime you focus on what you're eating, your stomach is probably going to thank you for it. No, no genetic intolerance is necessary. In a similar way, a religious community might offer a, a, a new point of focus, but the very fact that a person has a point of focus matters a hell of a lot more than what that point of focus is. If they'd been taken in by an atheist group, a birding club, or a bowling team, it might have offered the same reversal of fortune, no divinity required. But imagine if bowling alleys put that shit in their advertisements, right? Uh, imagine a billboard for a bowling alley that just said, reject gluttony, try bowling. Bowling and religion are, after all, tied in terms of ability to help you turn your life around. So they've got every bit as much claim to the title as religion does, but they don't bother to make it because there are other reasons to go bowling. You know, like focusing in on being a good bowler, you know, that can help you learn to appreciate incremental improvements. It can help you budget your time. It can give you a feeling of accomplishment, but it's also just a fun thing to do. All that other shit is so mundane, it's not even worth mentioning on the ad, assuming that you have anything at all to mention, right? Religion doesn't. So they're left with nothing but a claim that could be made about any non-vice activity and some vices for that matter. Religion is as close to nothing as it's possible for a thing to be and still have to have its own word. It really hamstrings their ability to advertise. And to be honest, I'm kind of impressed that their PR team found shit to say on every one of those fucking billboards, regardless of how mundane that shit was. But if a hotel advertised itself as having rooms with ceilings, you'd take that as an admission that they don't have much else to offer. 
I, I don't see why that's not more obvious to people when it comes to religion. 